Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at a book called Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. People with a quiet nature or an introverted personality sometimes see these character traits as a burden. They might feel like they don't always fit in and that they aren't like other people. But today we're going to take a look at an inspirational book which explores the hidden powers that come with being an introvert. So let's get started. So, what exactly is an introvert? An introverted person is someone who tends to listen more than they speak. They recharge their batteries by spending time alone or with close friends because many highly stimulating social environments can make them feel exhausted. An extrovert, on the other hand, is a person who tends to think out loud. They recharge their batteries by being socially active and they prefer more stimulating environments. It's important to remember that this isn't binary. People aren't necessarily 100% introverted or 100% extroverted. It is a complete spectrum, with ambivert being the term used to describe someone who would sit right in the middle. You'll probably have a rough idea as to where you would sit on the spectrum, but your levels of introversion and extroversion probably shift around depending on the situation you're in and who you're surrounded by. Now, if you're an extrovert, you might be asking yourself, why should I bother continuing to watch this video? Why would I want to learn about a book which talks about the power of being an introvert? This has absolutely nothing to do with me. And that is a good question, but one third to one half of people are introverted. So even if you consider yourself an extrovert, there are high chances that you either work with, you're friends with, or you might even be married to an introvert. Hence why understanding introversion can also help extroverted people to create success in their personal and professional relationships. In the Western world, we are dominated by the extrovert ideal. This is a term which describes the way that Western culture idealizes the characteristics of extroversion and doesn't look upon introversion as favorably. But in Eastern culture, the characteristics which are considered virtuous are much more on the introverted end of the spectrum. Being quiet demonstrates wisdom, respect and poise. It's only been in the last century that the extrovert ideal has pervaded Western culture. Before the 20th century, you were considered a good citizen if you conducted yourself with a quiet integrity. Historians refer to this time as the culture of character. But following the industrialization and urbanization which occurred in the 20th century, it became more important to be able to make yourself stand out from the crowd in order to be successful and this has led us to what's known as the culture of personality. This shift in culture can be seen in the way that we idealize celebrities today. And when you ask a kid what they want to be when they grow up, do you reckon they say that they want to be an astronaut? I'm not so sure considering that today's society celebrates TV stars more than it celebrates people that have gone to outer space. But anyway, let's crack on and take a look at the powers of being an introvert. Number one, focus. Introverted people can concentrate on a task for a long period of time, and this focus can lead to great achievements. You may or not know this, but Albert Einstein was an introvert, and he famously remarked, it's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with problems longer. So if you're a person with an introverted nature, and if you ever feel bummed out because of the way you are, just remember that introversion has helped to create one of the greatest minds that the world has ever seen. Number two, Imagination. Introverts can have great imaginations and rich inner worlds. J.K. Rowling, another famous introvert, was on a train from Manchester to London when the idea for Harry Potter first popped into her head. She wanted to write down the idea, but she didn't have a pen on her, and she was too shy to ask anyone on the train to borrow one. Just think about it for a second. This lady, who has had an idea which will go on to change the world and bring joy to millions of people, still had anxiety over simple social interaction. Crazy, right? Number three, depth versus breadth. Introverted people often have deep and profound relationships because they don't feel the need to connect with loads and loads of people. Therefore, they invest more time into the handful of friends that they do have, and this creates strong bonds. Okay, I think it's important that I take this opportunity to clarify myself and to appease any potentially disgruntled extroverts who are still watching this video. And now I understand that up until this point, I've pretty much been kissing the arse of the introverted community whilst not showing the same love to the extroverted people out there. So let me set the record straight. 
introverted people aren't in any way, shape or form better than extroverted people. And extroverted people aren't better than introverted people. The relationship between introversion and extroversion is more like yin and yang. They both need each other, and the world definitely needs both if it wants to kick some arse. Earlier we saw how extroversion is admired in Western culture, and because of this, some people with an introverted nature will behave in a more extroverted way in order to fit into society. These people are known as pseudo-extroverts, a term which to me sounds a bit harsh considering they're just trying to get by, but anyway, these pseudo-extroverts might feel pressured into going to a loud, jam-packed nightclub when they would much rather chill out at home with a good book or watch a film with a few buddies. They act out of their true character because they want to fit in, and they don't want to be seen as antisocial or weird. And now, we all behave slightly differently when we're in different situations. The way that you behave when you're at work, interacting with your boss and your colleagues, is probably different to the way that you behave when you're hanging out with your friends, and that's completely normal. But some introverts feel pressured into acting in a way which isn't their true self for so much of their life that it becomes unhealthy, and they lose touch with who they really are. This is why it's important for people with an introverted nature to embrace themselves. There's an awesome quote in this book. Spend your free time the way you like, not the way you think you're supposed to. I love a good old quote, and I love this one in particular because it reminds us that our lives belong to us. So we should spend as much time doing the things that we enjoy, and not just doing things because other people think we should enjoy them. This is probably a good point to mention that introverted people still need to keep pushing their boundaries and still need to keep stepping out of their comfort zones from time to time because this leads to personal growth. But the main thing to remember is that there is nothing wrong with having a quiet nature. You don't have a disease. So make sure you're living the life that suits you. It is an undisputable fact that there are certain unavoidable situations in life where behaving in an introverted manner isn't always going to lead to the best outcome. Let's take a second to imagine that an introvert is attending a business meeting. In situations such as this, it can often help to be more extroverted, so the introverted person might adopt more extroverted behaviours. For a lot of introverted people, it can be very draining to behave in this way, especially for long periods of time. So why don't we take a cheeky look at how introverted people can combat this exhaustion. The term restorative niche refers to a place where an introvert can go to in order to be their true self. The niche will usually be a quiet space, away from the stimulation of being surrounded by loads and loads of people. The niche might be somewhere as simple as the toilet cubicle at work, a place that you can go to to take a breather after a draining business meeting. The restorative niche concept can even be extended beyond a physical place. You can also think about it in terms of the amount of time that you dedicate to practicing meditation. It can even be something as simple as sending an email at work because you don't feel up for a lengthy phone call. All of these little things can help to prevent introverted people from becoming overwhelmed by the often hectic environments that we live in today. But thanks to this book, Susan's work has changed how the world sees introverts, and more importantly, how introverts see themselves. Susan also did a badass TED talk on the subject of this book. The YouTube video has gotten millions of views and Bill Gates even named it as one of his favourite TED Talks. Yes, Bill Gates. I've left a cheeky link in the description for you if you're interested in checking it out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm so glad that I came across this book. I very much have an introverted personality myself. I can hand on heart say that this book has helped me greatly in my life. If you're interested in purchasing the book for yourself, I've popped a link in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching guys. If you've got any feedback on how I can make this channel better, please hit me up. Love you, bye.